Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this 148 scale Jagdpanzer Kanone West German Tank Destroyer. Unlike my other smaller scale build videos that are listed on my channel in which those builds are built for private commission and belong to a private collector, the model that you see here is built from my own personal collection and is not for sale and or purchase. Now I often take on build commissions from scales ranging between 135th scale all the way up to 16th scale, however this model being 148th scale is a little bit outside my normal building range, however if anyone is interested in a build to similar specs, you can contact me through the East Coast armory.com email address listed below which is info at eastcoastarmory.com for pricing and availability information the model in this video is built mostly out of the box however does feature several add-ons and upgrades which i'll be going over in this video first a quick walk around the model for a brief history of the vehicle, the Panzer Kanone is a turretless tank destroyer that was developed by West Germany during the Cold War in the early 1960s. The Kanone, the Leopard, as well as the Martyr Armored Personnel Carrier were some of the first indigenous tank designs to be produced by West Germany since the end of World War II. The reason why this vehicle came about in the 1960s as there was a time period in which West Germany could not develop arms or military vehicles since the war's end. Once that ban expired, West Germany was then able to produce the vehicle that you see here. The vehicle is armed with a 90mm main gun. The gun is actually surplus from the M47 Patton. Prior to the West Germany being allowed to produce its own military equipment, they were using primarily American supplied tanks and vehicles. This would include first the M47 Patton and then later the M48. By the late 1950s and early 1960s, the M47 Patton had become obsolete. However, the guns were still deemed to be adequate, so they were taken off of the M47s in surplus and fitted to this new light tank destroyer chassis that was developed. Just like with the World War II designs, this vehicle here is turretless. This allows it to be very fast, however, it also keeps it having a low profile. The vehicle was not very well armored, however, it was really meant to shoot and scoot and be a very hard and difficult target to hit. In addition to the Bundeswehr, the vehicles were also exported to Belgium who used them for a period of time as well. The Jagdpanzer Kanone was utilized by the Bundeswehr all the way up until 1990, to which then by that point the 90mm gun of the Kanone was no longer adequate in dealing with the newer generation of Soviet tanks. There were several upgrading programs to the Kanone in order to replace the gun with anti-tank guided missiles. Several vehicles were converted and were used by the Bundeswehr, again, probably until the early 1990s. Before any go any further with the video, let's first take a step back to when the model was first started to get a better idea on what the starter kit looked like. And here's the model just prior to assembly. For the base starter kit, I'm going to start off with this Academy Vintage 148 scale Jack Panzer Canone kit. Now, the kit itself is on the interior is nothing more than a rebox or a knockoff of the Tamiya 148 scale Canone kit. Along with the Japanese Type 74, the Canone was the other most prolific 148 scale motorized kit that Tamiya produced and those kits I believe are still in production and are in several different offerings either two-way wire remote or motorized and I believe also pre-built versions exist as well. Like I mentioned before this is a vintage model kit. This kit here is when Academy was hooked up with Minicraft and Minicraft I believe was a distributor for Academy kits in the United States. These kits here date back with this style of box art to the 1980s and also the probably the early 1990s. As you can see, tanks from this era all had the same type of box art that were released by Academy. You just had the tank, which was built out of the box, with a white plain box with no fancy graphics or paintings 
to be found. And this particular version here, I actually purchased by luck from Squadron Mail Order. Apparently, Squadron was cleaning out their warehouse and they found a shipment of these old kits lying in the back of the warehouse. And they, they put them in their monthly supplement catalog that comes in and they were getting rid of them for about five bucks a piece. Purchased the kit a number of years ago and it's been sitting in the stash ever since. As you can see, it's got some dust on it just to show you how long it's been sitting in the shop. The tooling of the Timia kit dates back to the mid-1970s, so this kit here is not going to be super detailed or the details are going to be super crisp by today's standards. This is a vintage kit and will be built as such. Opening up the box. As you can see, this kit here is extremely, extremely simple. We have here with the lower hull. The kit has a pre-assembled gearbox as well as a switch and battery clips. This here is the upper hull. Here you get an idea of the quality of molding and detailing which is found on the piece. On the interior portion we have here the rubber tracks. As you notice they are currently one piece. You will actually have to go ahead and cut the tracks with a scissor or with a sharp exacto knife in order to separate them. And here we have the runner with the road wheels as well as the other parts. This here is a runner full of polycaps. And again, as you can see from the tooling, it's very, would be considered primitive, but it's also very easy to assemble. Here goes the instruction sheet. And getting to the bottom of the box, there is a supplied decal sheet. First, starting with the basic overall detailing of the model, this model here is going to be a lot more simplistic and basic compared to some of the other builds that you've seen me post in my video model showcase videos. Keep in mind this model here is 148 scale, and it's a vintage kit, and on top of that it is designed from the ground up to be a motorized model. Now because of the motorizational feature on it, a lot of the details are simplistic and are more representative as opposed to a finely detailed component which you would see on a more modern kit or of a kit with a larger scale. This is evident really with the suspension. The track as well as the sprocket and other molded and detailing is going to be a lot more simplistic and softer compared to some of the other offerings that are available in 135. However, keep in mind for again for the application of this model here, the stock suspension was adequate for the job at hand. No mods were made to the suspension or any of the other lower extremities to this vehicle. However, even though I left the operational components stock, I did go ahead and make some minor detail tweaks in order to better help the look of the overall model. This here was done to the front armored plate. The kit original featured two notches which were molded into both of these locations here. The purpose of these notches is probably for ease of molding. The notches really do hurt the look of the model and set it back a little bit. To repair the notch detailing was a simple fix. I simply took a piece of styrene block, carved it to the shape of the notch, inserted it and blended it in with the bodywork. With the plate totally flush, it helps the look of the appearance when the model is not being used. Another modification that I made was to the rear tow hitch light area. This on um, Bundeswehr vehicles, there is a small little appendage on the lower portions of the hull right above or in this case below the tow hitch. On the Bundeswehr vehicles it all follows pretty much the same format. You have an upside down tomb sh tombstone shaped plate with a white painted cross 
on it. In the center would be a light bulb, and protecting the bulb is a small little brush guard. The brush guard was scratch built for this model here. It is simply two pieces of wire that were bent and added to four holes which were drilled into the stock kit plate. Another quick little bit of detailing that helps the look is if we notice on these two lower locations here. On the real canone there are two tail lights that are located on the lower extremities. The blisters where the tail heights are mounted are present on the stock kit and a simple drop of red paint simply helps the look of it without having to scratch build any detailing. As for the model's track, it's a little tricky to see, however the track is painted with two separate colors. We have a darker gray color for the components of the track, which would be steel, and for the rubber pad section of the track, they are painted with black paint. This is also seen on the interior. Hopefully this comes out in, in, in on film, but here we can see that on the interior portion of the track, the teeth as well as the edges are painted with the dark gray, and the two portions of the track which would be touching the road wheels are painted in black. This is a very simple and stylized way to paint these type of detailless rubber tracks. On the real canone, it's just like with the American tanks and other tanks of the NATO countries, the track metal components are on the edges while the center portions where the road wheels ride on are actually made out of rubber. By simply painting these features in, it also helps the look of the vehicle compared to just leaving the track as one solid color. Moving our way up from the lower extremities takes us to the rear equipment rack. The rear rack that you see here is molded as one simple piece and on it contains the shelf, two boxes as well as two jerry cans. Now the jerry cans have been altered from the kit original. The kit original jerry cans had their handles as one molded in little handle and these handles here were removed. The stock handles were removed and in their place new jerry can handles were fabricated out of metal wire. The metal wire gives a more detailed appearance to the stock jerry can without having to really do a whole lot of scratch building. In addition to the handles, I also added the little spouts in which the fluid would be poured out of the jerry can when in use. Moving our way to the model's Pioneer tools, just like with a lot of other model kits of the era, the tools are integrally molded into the upper hull. And in the past, I would go ahead and delete these molded in features, sanding them flush, and replacing the little levers as well as the little mounting straps with small little pieces of wire and brass. However, for the purposes of this build and to save on time, I simply just used the molded in pieces as is and simply painted them with their appropriate colors. Once painted on with the small scale that this model is in, the molded in tools are not an issue. And since the model is motorized, small little pieces like straps and other little appendages are prone to popping off, specifically when the model is in operation. Moving our way to the front takes us to first the smoke trajectors. The Canon, just like all the other Bundeswehr vehicles, feature canister style smoke grenade launchers. And on the Canon, they're in this array here and located on the rear of the vehicle. This is mounted as is. It's a separate casting and is appropriately detailed for the scale that this model is in. One simple tip on all Bundeswehr vehicles is to paint the tips of the grenades in flat black as they are rubber on the real vehicles. Moving our way to the top deck of the model takes us to the commander's copula. On the kit original, if we recall from the unboxing video, the hatch is molded in the open state. For all my models, I like to make them in the buttoned up condition. And to do that, I simply snipped off the hatch and glued it to the copula as you see here. Now, the like which is present on all Bundeswehr 
tank copulas, they feature a panoramic periscope system. These periscopes are molded into the hatch and are a simple way to paint them. I simply just paint the periscope blocks with gloss black paint in which makes them pop over as opposed to just leaving them green or unpainted, which I see commonly done in other smaller scale Bundeswehr builds. The machine gun itself that comes with the kit is very basic, as one would imagine for a kit of this age and era. However, it does have the overall appearance of the MG3. The, to paint the gun, I simply use my standard paint for the metal components. And for the buttstock and grip, I went ahead and replicated that of a gloss black Bakelite color, which was primarily used on these weapons. Moving to the antenna bases, the tank features three antenna bases which are molded into the top deck. The antennas that you see here are simply added with strips of wire. The wire was added in the three locations which I commonly see them found on the real vehicles. This location here is actually a gunner scope or some kind of an optic and to further enhance the look, I went ahead and painted the portion black, which I've seen on the real vehicle. Moving our way to the front driver portion, like with the commander's copula, the driver's hatch on the kit original was molded in the open state, in which the hatch was actually in this location here and it was an integral molding. To make the vehicle modeled in the closed state, I first had to delete the hatch. The hatch was deleted carefully with a Dremel and several passes of some fine sandpaper in order to make for a nice seamless appearance that we have here. As for the hatch itself, it's fabricated out of styrene as well as metal and a few other little plastic scrap bits that I had lying around. Moving towards the front of the vehicle, the model here is completely stock. All the details that you see here are found on the Tamiya, or in this case, the Academy kit. As for what they are, these two objects here are the side view mirrors and they are represented in their folded away state. These pieces here would open up and open outward in order to give the driver a nice side view whenever he's driving in convoy use. The tank features two bow headlights, as well as two convoy lights. Now on Bundeswehr vehicles, the convoy lights are always found on the front corners of the fenders and are always an orange color. These pieces here are molded in with the kit and commonly they are just left painted with the base coat. A simple drop of orange paint greatly helps the look of the pieces. As for the gun, the gun is molded in a static position, it is not movable. It has a tarpaulin molded in. The tarpaulin detailing is pretty adequate for the scale and also for the tooling of the time. As you can see, it is painted in a dark gray or dark, a really dark olive drab coloring. This is as per the real canones that I've seen of this era. The gun barrel is a standard two-piece affair and is glued in the center. There is a small seam to contend with, but this is average for just about every single model tank kit that is around. Also on Bundeswehr vehicles and a lot of other post-war tanks, the front fenders and rear fenders are actually made out of rubber. They were painted and weathered in the condition that you see here. And once painted, make the tank pop as opposed to leaving them with the base coat. As for the model's paint and markings, the model is painted for a canone which would have been used by the Bundeswehr in the 1960s and into the 1970s and 80s. During that era, all Bundeswehr vehicles featured a solid color of a olive drab. This olive drab here is specific to the Bundeswehr. It's also important to note that very late versions of the canone, just prior to their deactivation in the Bundeswehr featured a three-tone NATO camouflage pattern. So it is possible to represent this kit as a later variation by simply painting the vehicle with the three-tone NATO camo. Moving our way to the model's markings, like we're, what we've seen from the unboxing video, the kit does supply you with a very basic set of decals. However, in my opinion, the decals are overly scaled and the quality is not 
as good as some of the other kits from the same era or even today. Rather than using the kit decals, I went ahead and rummaged through my spare decal bin and found some Bundeswehr markings that were left over from the Italeri M47 build that I did a little while ago. The Italeri markings were a lot better quality and went on with no issues. These markings would include the Bundeswehr Iron Cross, the number, the bumper identification numbering on both the rear and the front. The opposite side features the same mirror image as the reverse. As for the five in the yellow circle, this was from the kit original and was retained. Missing from the decal sheet, which are probably present on the Tamiya version, are the other Bundeswehr markings, which are actually found on the, on the instruction sheet, however, not supplied with the kit. Like I mentioned before, the model is fully motorized. To get access to the interior of the model, the upper and lower hulls separate. They are connected via two polycaps and are actually very efficient in holding the two halves together. With the top hull off, you can see the interior of the model. It is a very, very basic motorized model and was a very simple build to assemble. Starting with the gearbox, it is a simple small little Mobachi style motor with some gear reduction. The gears themselves are a broad plastic style gear, which in my opinion are very durable, specifically for the type of running wear that this model will see. The vehicle is powered with two AA batteries, and there is a very rudimentary double switch. The front idlers are held in place with a steel metal rod, which is a very nice touch as this material holds up well with the rigors of the running as well as the tension of the track. When assembling the piece, you want to super glue the battery clip in place, prevents it from moving around. And this portion here actually clips into the model with no adhesive necessary. Now, it's important to note that the switch here descends from the bottom of the model, and when handling the, the model, you may accidentally nub the switch in either direction. This here will turn the tank on, so you have to be careful. In fact, while filming this video, I had the batteries in, and I might have a few outtakes of the tank activating on me when doing the showcase video. Now, the switch actually makes the tank go either forward or reverse, which is a nice feature. To install the batteries, we have two molded in little symbols that are integrally molded into the lower hull, in which they give you the orientation of how the batteries are fitted. As you can see, the switch was in the on state. When I go this way, the tank goes forward and reverse in the opposite way when I move the switch. Now this here was probably the hardest part of the model I could see for a beginner in that you need to use a soldering iron in order to connect the leads. Once the leads are connected though, the rest of the model is very, very easy to assemble. I will now put the two halves together and then take the tank for a test run. And now let's put some miles on the model. Now, like I mentioned before, the model is either forward or reverse, and it's a simple motorized vehicle. There is no control over the direction. Also, the suspension is fixed and is not articulating, so the model will not be able to roll over any type of terrain like you would see on some of the 116 or 16 scale counterparts. To turn it on, simply hit the switch, and off it goes.
As for a skill level, typically on my model showcase videos, I often recommend the kits that are shown for people who have a intermediate to advanced range. This kit, however, can literally be built by just about anybody. The only caveat to that, of course, is again the with that of the electrical in that you need to know how to use a soldering iron in order to connect the wire leads. It says you can just twist the wire ties together in order to facilitate the connections. However, it is strongly recommended to use a soldering gun or a soldering iron for this application as it just makes the tank a lot more reliable and, and frankly a lot more professionally built as opposed to just simply twisting the leads around the connectors. They are fun to build, they're enjoyable to tweak and modify, and are a blast to have them run across your living room floor. And once you're done running your model, their smaller size makes them great to put on a desk or even to enhance a bookshelf. And that concludes this model showcase video for this 148 scale Yachtpanzer Kanone West German Tank Destroyer. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thank you.